Brother and sister, uh, today I want to share uh, something where NECF uh, emphasizing on, uh, which is a topic about angel. Okay, so just to ask any one of you, uh, you met angel before? Can I see your hand? Met angel one, one, two, three, four. Okay, there are four people among us who met angel before. Okay. So, the angel that you met uh, may be different because there are many types of angels, okay? There are many types of angels. So, in times to come, I will invite those who uh, met angels to share with us uh, under what situation you met angels and what's the message that the angels uh, spoke to you, okay? So, today I want to talk a bit about angel, okay? So... Uh, the thing that I want to share is greater than angel. Okay, what is greater than angels? Yes, Jesus is greater than angel. So, it is good and also a wonderful thing for someone who meet angels, who have a personal encounter with angel. So, sometimes angel can come in many forms. Okay, not just limited to a uh, uh, specific forms. Sometimes angels can come in the human form. Sometimes angels also can come in the light form or even out of our normal humanoid appearance. Okay? Angels can come in the form like lion or eagle or bear. Okay? So, this these are the image of the angelic being. But the, Jesus Christ himself is actually greater than angels. I just want to share one uh, uh, incident with you. Many years ago, I forgot how many years ago, someone in our church met with uh, a person and that person told him, that person told him Jesus Christ is... Archangel Michael. Wow. That person told him Jesus Christ is Archangel Michael. And that brother, he come to tell me. And after that, I said, you know, Jesus Christ is not Archangel Michael. Then he said, David, follow me. Go to meet that guy. Then uh, share, uh, share the word of God with him and tell him Jesus is not Archangel Michael. So I went to that person and that person I just quote some Bible words then he cannot answer then he referred to another person and then he get the, another person to meet me. And that person only eventually I found out he is Jehovah Witness. I think you all have uh, some encounter with Jehovah Witness, right? Jehovah Witness, one of their beliefs is they believe Jesus Christ is Angel Michael. Okay? And when the times they, they show their Bible, their Bible is actually different from our Bible. So some things inside their Bible already been altered and the content is different. So until a point that he, then he said, okay, never mind. You read from your Bible. He, he told me, asked me to read from my Bible. Then I show him, I show him book of Hebrew. Okay, I show him book of Hebrew, and from the book of Hebrew, it clearly stated that actually Jesus Christ is greater than angel. Jesus is not angel. So therefore, look at book of Hebrew chapter one. Okay, Hebrew chapter one. I'm going to run through verse five to verse nine, and then after that, continue with verse ten until fourteen. So let's take a look as what the scriptures say. For to which of the angels did God ever say, you are my son? Today I have become your father. Or again, I will be his father and he will be my son. And God clearly said, Jesus, and God said, Jesus, you are, you are my son. 
Because when Jesus Christ was baptized in the river of Jordan, the dove, which is the Holy Spirit, rests upon Jesus Christ, and heaven opened, and God said, This is my beloved Son. So, God never a time, never a time in the history of mankind or any record, biblical record, that God ever say, the angels is His Son. No. Angels, God did not call them His Son. But God said, you are my Son. Today, I have become your Father. And I will be His Father and He will be my Son. So, angels never be named as the Son of God. Okay? Angels, they are not the Son of God. But we are the Son of God. Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And God said, I will be His Father and He will be my Son. And again, when God bring His firstborn into the world, He said, let all God's angels worship Him. So God said, all angels worship Him. So from this Bible verse, it clearly indicates and also tells us all angels worship Jesus. And we are not supposed to worship angels. Okay? None of us, we are not supposed to worship angels. But all angels are supposed to worship Jesus. In speaking of the angel, he said he makes his angels spirits and his servants flame of fire. So the angels, they are the flame of fires. They are the ministering spirit. But about the sun, he says, Your throne, O God, will last forever and ever. A scepter of justice will be the scepter of your kingdom. You have loved righteousness and hate wickedness. Therefore, God, your God, has set you above your companions by anointing you with the oil of joy. So from looking at the book of Hebrew, we know very clear Jesus Christ is not angel. Because every angel worship Jesus. If every, if the words every angel worship Jesus, then definitely for sure is every angel. And definitely for sure Jesus Christ is not angel. And again in verse 10, Hebrew chapter 1 verse 10, he also say in the beginning, Lord, you lay the foundations of the earth and the heavens are the work of your hands. They will perish, but you remain. They will walk all way out like a garment. So the earth and even heavens will perish, will wear out. So who is greater than heaven? God is greater than heaven. Jesus Christ is greater than heaven. So even the earth and the heavens, they will perish, they will wear out, but God, our Lord Jesus Christ, will last forever. You will roll them up like a rope, like a garment, they will be changed, but you remain the same, and your years will never end. To which of the angels did God ever say? Okay, God said this. To which of the angels did God ever say, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet? So are not all angels ministering spirit sent to serve those who will, who will inherit salvation? So who... Who are those who will in, inherit salvations? And we are the people who will inherit the salvations. So angels, they are made by God to minister to us. So these are the functions of the angels. So therefore, we need to cooperate with angels. And we also shall appreciate the ministering of angels. So angels, they are servants of God. They are servants of God, minister to God's people who will inherit the salvations. And in fact, God's people is not just limited to inherit salvations. 
and you and I, especially those who have victory, something more than salvation. Because there will be a time of the millennial kingdom of God established. When the millennial kingdom of God come, those who have victory in Christ Jesus, they will rise up to rule and reign. So God's servants who have victory, they will be given the opportunity to rule and reign during the millennial kingdoms of Christ. And we are the people of the Lord. The one that who have victory shall receive it. So by the way, just to share with you, angels, they are immensely powerful beings. Okay? It is not like someone think that or oh, angels are nothing or cute little angels. So sometimes some, some painting or some uh, picture where people put up uh, cute little angels and with wings and then flying around. But maybe these are just <laughs> uh, chubby looking. Uh, uh, maybe those are just uh, a kind of angel. Okay? But I've never seen that kind of angel before. Okay? So there are many types of angels. But some angels are very, very powerful. Very, very powerful. So let's take a look at 2 Kings. Chapter 19, verse 35. And as you read 2 Kings, you can see that during that time, an angel in one day wiped out how many? 185,000. One angel. One angel can wipe out 185,000. So, if let's say God sent one troop of angels to come to the city of Malacca, wow. I tell you, I think uh, last time I shared before, there was one time, I think many years ago, more than 10 plus years ago, I still remember there was Friday prayer meeting. While we were having church prayer meeting, the eyes of one brother was open. He saw the open visions. When the time he closed his eye, he saw the vision. And when the time he opened his eye, he still see the visions. And he see the dimensions of overlappings. He can see the people sitting down there praying. But at the same time, he saw angels, which is overlapping in the same space, but two different dimensions. He saw a troop of armies of God, angels lining up, marching. And during that time, those angels came to the city of Malacca. But that was a short period of time because during that time, God said, my army will be here in this city for a period of time. But after that, probably those troop of the angels of God left. And during that period when the angels of the Lord was there, the churches in Malacca was, were forcing, okay? Because there were stations in this city to fight, to fight the demonic spirit and also the fallen angel, okay? And until when, I don't know when those angels left, maybe they have other assignments, they left to other places. And then we started to see the church situation in Malacca deteriorate. Deteriorate. But once more, and once again, you know what happened? Once again, we can ask God to send His angel, troop of angels, His army to come back to this city. Okay? We can ask God to send His angel to come back, the warring angels, to fight on behalf of us. So other than that, you can see that how powerful those angels are. Exodus chapter 12, verse 29. An angel can take the life of every firstborn in the entire nation of Egypt. In one night, all the firstborn of Egyptians wipe out in just one night. And then in book of Revelations, chapter 19, verse 10. 
when the angels appear, when the angels appear, and it was so glorious and so bright, and the Apostle John cannot help but fell on his knee. And the Apostle John, he saw the glorious angels. He, he wanted to worship that angel. But that angel of God is a holy angel. He said, you and I, we are both servants to the Lord our God. You shall not worship me. So thank God. You know the true angels, the holy angels of God, they will not accept worship from men. If any angels that you find them accept worship from men, these are, those are fallen angels. Okay? Those are fallen angels. So don't, don't simply believe any words from any angels, but you have to test the angelic being. Okay? When you encounter any angelic being, you have to test them. So, next slide. And this was the situation. Angels are immensely powerful. Okay? This is just one type of angels. There are angels of death. There are warring angels. There are also guardian angels. There are angels of healings as well. So sometimes, under cert certain specific situations, when someone has certain disease or certain sicknesses, when you know that during that time the anointing of the Lord was there and the angels of the healing angels was there and the healing angels can just minister to the people. That's why it is important for God's people to open our spiritual eyes. When the heaven opened and God will pour out His gift to His people, some of you, your spiritual eyes will open to see the thing in the spiritual realms. And I wish and I hope by the grace of God, many of us, our spiritual eyes are open. We can see the thing in the spiritual realms. You know, there are times when someone has sickness, certain pain on their body and also depressions, they encounter depressions. But if someone, their spiritual eyes is open, they can see, actually there are something pierced into their body but in the spiritual realms. Okay, it's not in the physical dimensions. They see something pierced into their body. And if, let's say, if they pray for them, they, in the spiritual realm, they pull the thing out, then the pain will lift them. Okay, the pain will lift them. And some of them, they are changed with certain kind of change. So certain kind of thing that having bondages over them, change them until they cannot do Think freely for the kingdom of God. So may God open our spiritual eyes so that we can see the thing in the spiritual realms. When the time we minister to people, if we see thing in the spiritual realm, we can undo the thing. We can undo the things and it will be very easy. So, how can healing come easily? Healing come easily when the times we receive the word of knowledge from God. And when the times we see the thing in the spiritual realms, then the thing can take place very fast. I came to realize this when the times I myself was being attacked. I came to realize it only then I find that a period of time that I was having chest pain and you know, as, as though as like heart attack kind of thing. Only then I realized it is not normal. And it, it lasted a few years only then I came to realization it was the attack of the enemy. Because there was one day I lay hands on my chest, I say, in Jesus' name, I command this pain to leave me right now. And the pain just left. As though as I casting out a, a evil, an evil spirit, you know. So from some of my personal experience, then I, I realized certain sicknesses that happen in the body of people is not because of the physical dimension alone, but there are certain spiritual beings that are causing 
causing the pain or causing certain sicknesses. So therefore, from that experience onwards, every time I have any little pain, even if it's just a little pain, I just command the pain to leave. Just a little pain. I, I, don't, I don't entertain, I don't let it linger anymore. So I don't tell, tolerate with any form of pain on my body. So, brother and sister, I wish that from now on that you recognize and you pray for yourself, and you pray for yourself, pray for your family. Don't accept any form of pain on your body. Don't accept, okay? While it is still small, reject it. Totally reject it. So I find it was so effective whenever there's a small thing. And even there was one time that heaviness. I went to work, it was very heavy, like something like, wow, sitting on my shoulder, like very heavy, like I feel very tired. You know what I did? I command, in Jesus' name, I command the spirit that causing heaviness to lift me right now in Jesus' name. And on that day, after I think a few minutes later, the heaviness just left me. So brother and sister, if any one of you, you encounter heaviness, heaviness, what you can do is you have to take authority and speak to that thing that caused heaviness to leave you. I know that some of you, you encounter recently. You have to speak to the spirit that causing that heaviness to leave you. Okay? I can speak on behalf of you. But if you can train yourself to take authority over your own circumstances, and it will be better. Okay? Take authority in your life. Take back the authority that the devils have stolen from us. So next slide. So this was the incidence. 85,000 were killed by one angel. Next slide. And this and other scriptures, 12, Exodus 12, 29. At midnight, the Lord struck down all the firstborn in Egypt. From the firstborn of Pharaoh, who sat on the throne to the first bonds of the prisoners who was in the dungeons and the first bonds of all the livestock as well. So, angels are not just some being... Okay, one more thing that I need to really emphasize is very, very strongly. Those who encounter angelic being, okay? Those who encounter angelic being you have to understand that there are angels from God, there are also angels not from God. So some pretend to be angels of light. As they pretend to be angels of light, you need to understand and recognize and test them. If they are not the angels from God, if you test them with the Word of God, they will manifest and they will reveal themselves. So let's take a look at the next slide. Go to next. Okay, this one was the Apostle John. He fell down because the angels were so glorious. He thought, he, he had a wrong impression. He, he thought that he, it was God and he wanted to fall down to worship. But God said, no. Uh, the angels say, no, you should not worship me. Okay? Don't do that. I'm the fellow servants with you and with your brothers and sisters who hold to the testimony of Jesus. Worship God. Okay? And he asked him to worship God alone. Be very, very careful if any angel who accept worship. There was one time I heard the testimony of a pastor from Hong Kong. Uh, he was a Buddhist. And uh, he sit down to meditate. When the time he meditates, he can enter into different dimensions, different realms, different levels. So in the beginning, he saw those uh, ugly uh, demons. And also the demons tried to scare him and very terrible kind of demons when the times he meditate, When the times he learned not to bother those uh, 
fallen angels or angelic beings, then he and ascend to another level. When he ascend to another level of realms, he enter into the realms. He saw some so-called God. He saw what God, Guan Yin. He saw thing like Guan Yin, those kind of thing. Then those those spiritual beings accept accept his worship. But later he found out that actually he can meditate and he can go to even higher level. And then when the time he go to higher level, then he know that oh, actually those so-called spirit that accept his worship, they are not the true God. Until he go to the very very high level, he reached to one extent. When the time he meditate, he enter into spiritual dimensions. He reached a dimensions where he felt the love. Love in the spiritual realms. He felt that he himself immersed in the in the realm and he become part of it, and he felt love. But until the day that he became Christian, he became Christian only then he understood. Actually, he no need to like meditate while one level, another level, another level, another level, then up to the level of encounter love. Then, and he felt that. At that level of love, that he felt that that is God, and when the time he became Christian, he straight away, hey, how come it's so easy? I can directly talk to God, I can feel the God, who is love. So he understand that God is love, and Christian have a very wonderful privilege. We no need to go through like the Taoists or the Buddhists, like step by step you meditate, meditate until you reach that level. Actually, we are the son of God. We straight away have the privilege to assess, to assess the Lord our God. So, be very, very careful to enter into the Oriental, Oriental meditations, especially the mystic, mystic meditations. Those are very dangerous, especially in the very beginning stage. Those at the very beginning stage, that's why some of them they say, uh, in Cantonese there is one terminology they call, "zhou fo yap yap mo," "zhou fo ru mo." They say is, they enter into a certain stage where they encounter the demonic spirit, and if they cannot handle it, they will be tortured and also be destroyed in that realms. So, brother and sister. We no need to go through all those, and we can just directly meet God. So, number two, I want to share with you: angels are God's flames of fire. Okay, angels are God's flame of fires. In Hebrew chapter one verse seven, in speaking of the angels, he said, "He makes his angels spread, and his servant flames of fire." And again, in Psalm. Hundred and four, verse four, who make his angels spirit, his minister a flaming fire. So angels, they are flaming fires. Look at book of Daniel chapter ten, verse four to nine, and also later we look at verse twelve to fourteen. So during that times, Daniel was worshiping God and he was praying to God. Okay. As he was praying to to God, he saw a visions. God opened his spiritual eyes. He saw the visions. What was the visions? I looked up, and there before me was a man dressed in linen, with a belt of fine gold from topaz around his waist. His body was like topaz. His face like lightning. His eyes like flaming torches. His arm and leg like the gleams of burnished bronze, and his voice like the sounds of multitude. So these are the description and also the illustrations about the angelic being where Daniel saw. Okay, if let's say if you see someone like this, what is your feeling? How you feel when you see someone dressed, uh, dressed in linen? Belt of gold, and also upas uh, on his waist, uh, waist, 
and a body like topaz, face like lightning. Well, very bright and also eyes like flaming toss. The eyes like fire. So if you see things like that, how you find it? <laughs> Aaron said, run. <laughs> but those who met angels, they, they didn't run, huh? Okay. You see, just how few people raise their hands. Okay. Some of you, you met angels. Some of you, you met angels. And uh, some of you, you met Jesus. Okay. But if you met Jesus, you know that one is Jesus. Okay. When you met angel, you know that one is angel. Okay, you will know in your spirit. So the one that who met angel, any one of you, you not only met angel, the angel touched you before. Can I see your hand? Angel touched you before? Hey, supposed to have someone. <laughs> yes. Yeah, touch your shoulder. So, angels, they are not just uh, like a uh, hologram. Uh. It's not just like hologram. <laughs> they can touch you. <laughs> okay? So, some of you, you, you met angels, the angel delivered message to you. One thing you need to take note, angel they appear to you not for fun. Okay? They are not like, uh, they come to you and say, I want to chit chat with you, uh, see uh, Manchester football, how, or Liverpool. No, they <laughs> angel, they carry with them the missions. Okay, they carry with them the mission. They don't just, just come and meet you for nothing. Okay, every angel that come to you, they carry with them the missions. They have something to accomplish. And they are ready to be sent by you. That's why God's people need to learn to cooperate and work together with angels. So how do you work with angels? Is in your prayer, you can ask God or you can directly ask the angels to do something on your behalf. Okay? They are not to be worshipped by you. Angels are not to be worshipped by you. But we have to... Okay, those who have made, they understand. Because... I use no, I, I, I don't have made <laughs> okay I don't have made and I'm not used to like ask made to do something because that's not me that's why when the times I went to my sister-in-law house okay uh, Abigail's sister at Singapore I went to her house after I eat I want to take the plate and also the bowl I want to go to the sink there to wash you know what is the consequences if I wash the plate and also the bowl? <laughs> Not like we got the maid. The consequences is later the maid will be scolded by my brother-in-law. So, so pity. That's why I, in order not to be, not to make her bad, I, I just leave it there so that she will not be scolded by her, her boss or master. So, do you understand this? So therefore, when the time you deal with angels, if you understand your positions in Christ Jesus, you understand your relationship with Jesus Christ, the way that you relate with angels is, you ask angels to do something. There was one time I was upset because I prayed to the Lord, and I asked Angel to do something. I asked Angel to do something and then the thing was not accomplished. Then I come before God. I say, God, why? I ask, I ask the Angel to do... Then I, I ask God, God, is it... The, the Angel did not accomplish his task. I say, the Angel did not accomplish his task that I asked for. But... God have a conversation with me to, to deal with that issue. But eventually, the angel still accomplished his task. So brother and sister, you can ask the angels in your prayer to accomplish a task. 
whether it's the healing task or whether it's the warring task or whether you ask the angel to speak to people okay you can ask the angels and in fact the angels they are ready how many of you 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 watch a testimony of someone saw boring angels anyone boring angels the angels they are boring then they want to sleep they lie there because nobody give them command nobody give them command to carry out the thing they are waiting they are waiting for the people of God waiting for the servant of God to open their mouth to give command but what kind of command they listen they listen to the command of the word of God because when you command using the word of God they are listening to the voice of God who is their master so therefore when the time you want to talk to angels or you want to give certain command you use the word of God you use the word of God to command and the angels carry out the activities on behalf of you how I pray for my family members is like this I pray God you send your angels go to my parent house surround their house to protect them even though they are non-believer but I pray that God you send your angels to protect them okay even though they are not yet believing you so in fact in fact angels are sent by okay sent by God to minister to those who inherit salvations but I do an ex extra request okay the extra request is minister to the one that who have not believing in Jesus Christ but yet to inherit the kingdom of God and yet to inherit the salvations so I even ask angels I ask God to send his angel to to protect my wife and also my children I say whether whether in the house or outside of the house God your angels go with them and if let's say if certain situations under any form of attack then I ask and request the angels of healing to come so brother and sister you can ask the angels of war to fight on behalf of you or the church or the city and also the healing angels to minister so don't let angels become boring angels so can you tell the person next to you give some job to angel okay give some job to angel continue with book of Daniel chapter 10 verse 12 to 14 then he continued do not be afraid Daniel since the first day that you set your mind to gain understanding and to humble yourself before your God your words were heard and I have come in response to them but the prince of the Persians kingdom resisted me 21 days then Michael one of the chief prince came to help me because I was detained there with the king of Persia now I have come to explain to you what will happen to your people in the future for the visions concerns a time yet to come so actually during that time Daniel received a vision concerning the end time and the prince of Persia was actually blocking blocking the delivering of the message from the angels of God and in general we believe during that time the angel who delivered the message to Daniel was Gabriel Gabriel was delivering the message he wanted to deliver the message but halfway the prince of Persia against him resists him until until who come until Michael My, Michael came and fought with the prince of Persia then Gabriel had time to go to meet Daniel so brother and sister these are very real things and we have to pray for this period of time 
You know, there was one time my wife prayed. She prayed, God, send Archangel Michael come to Malacca, <laughs> come to this city. She requests God send Archangel Michael to come. And after that, she shared this prayer with me. Then I said, uh, Archangel Michael have a lot of important tasks to do. <laughs> Who is the prince of Israel? The prince of Israel is actually Archangel Michael is the one that protects Israel. Then I, I told my wife, I said, Angel Michael have a lot of important things to do. Okay? Uh, it's not simply we can just simply ask him. But Archangel Michael, his foremost important role is to protect Israel. Okay? Is to protect Israel. So take a look at the next slide. So I just put up some pictures just for illustrations. So the angels are God's, are the minister of flaming fire. So, <laughs> look, I mean, <laughs> okay. Uh, I, I, never, uh, we, I never meet uh, Archangel Michael, so don't know how Archangel Michael actually look like. Okay, so let's just take a look at the characteristic of the angels of God. So what are the characteristics? Okay, the angels of God, they are angelic beings, they are heavenly beings. Okay, they are spiritual beings. And these spiritual beings, their role is to serve God. Okay? And fulfill God's command. So those angels who minister to people, they don't just, just now as I say, they don't just come and chit-chat with you or talk about other, other people or other things unless they are delivering the word of knowledge. Okay? Unless they deliver the word of knowledge or else they don't simply come to you and and listen to you to tell story or tell story to you no they they carry with missions every one of them they carry with them missions so the angels of god they are holy and righteous they don't accept worship okay be very very clear about this remember this they don't accept worship so if let's say that that pastor, he ascends. He saw Kuan Yin. And the Kuan Yin accepts his worship. What is this kind of being? These are not angels of God. Kuan Yin is actually fallen angel pretending to be the angel of light. So they are fallen angel pretend to be the angel of light. Those angels, they accept worship of men. So, in fact, the demonic spirit, the unclean spirit or evil spirit, they are low ranking spirit. They come out and uh, like a head only and then they scare you or a very ugly face. Those are low level. High level, they pretend to be like God. They pretend to be like God. So be very, very careful of those angels pretend to be like God. So, angels possess great power and strength. And uh, we can see their ability just now already shows some Bible verses. And then next, I want to talk about the missions of the angels of God. What are the missions of the angels of God? The angels of God, they are servants. Number one important thing of the angels of God, they are servants. They carry out God's will and perform tasks to fulfill God's purpose. You can read Hebrew chapter 1, verse 14. God's angels, they are the ministering spirit. So angels do not just come to chit chat with you and then tell story or whatever. They come with a mission. They are messengers. Just like Gabriel delivered the message, explaining something to God's people and give guidance to the people of God. They are guardians, angels. They protect the people, provide spiritual guidance, physical protections. They even can provide physical protections. You know, on this earth, we have the chances to meet evil spirit more frequent than the holy angels of God. In fact, In fact, there was one time I went to a student house, an MMU student, 
somewhere here because their house was haunted. And I asked them, how haunted is your house? And they say, in the kitchen, they see the plate fly. The, the plate fly and then, then can just drop. So that's, that was how haunted. But when the times we went there and we prayed for the house and nothing happened, okay? Ha, ah, frying saucer. So, then another times, there was a friend of Brother Ken who do business at Malacca Central. And he saw, he, he said that he was cursed by the witchcraft. And, and Aaron went there. Aaron went there. You know what happened is, every day when the time he do business and he will ship his, the floor of his uh, shop and he found needles. Needles at the shop. Then if today he already clean, then next day he 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 mob again, then he's he found needle again. Then several times, many needles. They mean like needles don't know from where. It's they mean like come from nowhere that there were needle appear from nowhere. Until Aaron went there to pray. Pray against the witchcraft. Witchcraft practices or any kind of curses because he believed his competitor selling the same thing was actually cursing him. That's why he like curse his shop so that no customer go to his shop. And those needles appear. And Aaron, God opened the spiritual eyes of Aaron. He saw the needles flying. Needles flying and then pray against it and then those needles no more. So brother and sister, spiritual things are real. Sometimes spiritual things can even transform to become physical thing. So these two illustrations, two, two things that I mentioned to you already good enough for you to have some glimpse in terms of the thing in the spiritual realms that enter into the physical realms. The flying plate, the needles, those things. So God, guardian angels, is the one that who protect, sometimes protect us from certain form of accidents or rescue us at certain time. And another characteristic and also the missions of the angels, they are the worshippers. They are to worship God. So the third thing I want to share today, which is the important thing, Even though angels are great, even though angels are powerful, but Jesus Christ is greater than angels. And about the Son, who is Jesus, your throne, O God, will last forever and ever. A scepter of justice will be the scepters of your kingdom. Next slide. And this is Hebrew chapter 1, verse 8. The throne of God will last forever and ever. And Jesus Christ is greater than angels. So therefore, every one of us, we should be glad. We should be glad because we have a great God. We serve a great God. We can directly communicate with our God. Greater than angels. And therefore, because of this, and you are the one that, who can give command to angel and let the angel to fulfill their mission. But make sure the command you give to the angel are in line with the will of God. Okay? Don't simply ask angel to do some, some your, something which is your own own selfish desire. Okay? It's not simply like the angel of God is just like any kind of maid. You ask them to simply do anything they will do for you. No. They only do something which is in line with the will of God. They are not someone like can simply manipulate by you. Okay? So look at Hebrew chapter 1 verse 5 to 9. We take a look at the scripture. Verse 7. In speaking of the angels, he said, He makes his angels spirit and his servants frame of fire. 
So brother and sister, one more thing. The last thing, the last thing for today is number four. Okay. Uh, Enoch, go to page. Okay. In 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 3, what God actually say about angel? One day. Okay, one day. This is what Apostle say. Apostle Paul say, do you not know that we will judge angels. How much more the things of this life? One day, those who inherit the kingdom of God, okay, those who inherit the kingdom of God, those who have victory, you will even judge angels. But what kind of angel that you are actually judging? The fallen angel. The fallen angels are the angels that you are to judge because they attack God's people. You know, nowadays, when I deal with evil spirit, demons, I don't tolerate with them. I really don't tolerate with them. When the times I come against them, I directly just against them. I don't chit-chat with them. I don't play with them. I just command them and I just rebuke them. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 10 to 14. All the fallen angels, okay, all the fallen angels, they will perish. All the fallen angels, they will perish. And one day, what is the consequences of the fallen angels? The fallen angels will be thrown into the lake of fire. Lake of fire is not made for people of God. Lake of fire is made for Satan and those who rebel together with him. So, let not God's people enter into the lake of fire because that is not the place meant for human. That's the place meant for for Satan and fallen angel. I think I shared before there was a, a minister. He ministered to the, someone that who is demon possessed. When the time the pastor quote the scripture, he said, uh, he said, uh, Satan will be bound by a thousand, uh, will, will be changed. And after a thousand years, so when the times he mentioned that, when the time he talked to the evil spirit, you will be changed. Then that evil spirit was terrifying. And when the time he said, after 1,000 years, you will, uh, Satan will be released for a period of time. You know what the evil spirit laughed for? He ha 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 ha. <laughs> when you, you can see that the evil spirit, they're really afraid of the scripture. When the time you quote the scripture and until the point that they are changed, they are terrified. But when the time you say they will be released, they are so happy that they are start laughing. So you can see that this evil spirit, they really honour the word of God. I tell you, the word of God is so powerful. When the time you quote the word of God to deal with the evil spirit, it is very, very powerful. They have to listen to the word of God. You know, man is so terrible. Man don't even listen to the word of God. But I tell you, angel and fallen angel, they listen to the word of God. So, brother and sister, these are just some of the things concerning angels. But definitely for sure, a lot of you, you have personal angelic encounter. Okay? And uh, I just give chance to someone to share their angelic uh, encounter. Okay, out of those who raise their hands, anyone want to grab the opportunity to come to share? Come. Okay, it's a share. Okay, share your encounters of uh, angels. Amen. Uh, many years ago, uh, uh, I was facing certain problem, and during, during the night, I, I couldn't sleep well. Until the next morning, I, I, I realized that I slept, I slept, and then I knew that uh, normally when I sleep, I normally lock my, my room door. 
And, and when I was sleeping on one side, I was facing the, the wall. My, my door was this way, so I couldn't see, I couldn't see the door because I was facing the, the wall. But anyway, I saw that uh, my room door was open and there was a tall guy, uh, as tall as the, the height of the door, and he was wearing white. Then I wo when I woke up the next morning, I was thinking, who is the person who had entered my room since I locked the door? So then I knew that it was the angel because when I couldn't sleep, I was praying to God that asked God to help me to sleep. So God sent an, an angel to, to my room and, and praise the Lord, he came in. I, I could see that I was facing this way. I could see that, that the angel came over to me and then he pulled my blanket from my feet up to my shoulder. So, so when my blanket was up my shoulder, immediately I slept. Immediately I slept until the next morning. Then I knew that it was the angel that came into my room and, and protect me. And from that day onwards, my problem was solved. Amen. So brother and sister, wonderful, right? You know that God can send His angel to minister to us. Amen. Hallelujah. I know a lot of you, you have angelic uh, encounter. Uh, maybe next time, we allow you to share. <laughs> okay. Why not we just close with a prayer and give thanks to God so that we learn how to commission angels. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, may God you grant insight to our brother and sister so that we will pick up this truth. We understand our authority and we understand our right. As a son of God, we can commission we can commission angels to carry out the will of God. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, may God you bring this message and let it sing into the spirit of our brother and sister. And we will take this in our heart that we will commission angels to fulfill the will of God and even to fulfill the very missions that God asks us to accomplish on this earth. Thank you, Heavenly Father. May God, your anointing rest upon us, open our spiritual eyes. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, you open the spiritual eyes of our brother and sister. That from now on, our brother and sister will learn to commission angels of healing to bring healing and even the guardian angels to protect and even the warring angels to fight on our behalf. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, God, you give wisdom to us, every one of us to receive wisdom from you so that we will commission angels for the benefits of your kingdom. We give thanks to you and we give praise to you. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Okay, that's all for today. Thank you, everyone, and have a blessed time. Pastor Tosa has some. Come. Yeah, yeah, it's okay. I just feel so stirred just now earlier on. I, I, I wonder whether we can just look at just one verse. Wow. Pastor David, you don't mind just. Yeah, it's in uh, Second Second Kings uh, chapter chapter six. I, I just Second Kings chapter six. Whether we can just look at that. Uh, this is uh, the story of the king of Aram who actually uh, keep on trying to attack Israel. Uh, but the prophet Elisha always seemed to know exactly what was happening. And then uh, uh, he conferred with his officers, I will set up my camp in such and such a place. Uh, uh, and then you, you just continue. Let's just look at the verse. Huh? Beware of the man of God is actually Elisha passing that place because the Arameans are going down there. Continue. 
that the king of Israel checked on the place indicated by the man. Time and again, Elisha warned the king. That's the work of the prophet. That he was on his guard in such places. Continue. They enraged the king of Aram. He summoned his officers. Tell me, which one of us is on the side of the king of Israel? None of us, the, uh, my lord, the king. But Elisha, the prophet who is in Israel, tells the king of Israel the very words you speak in your bedroom. Continue. Go, find out where he is, the king ordered, so I can send men and capture him. The report came back. He is in Dothan. Continue. Then he sent horses and chariots. They went by night and surrounded the city. When the servant of the man of God got up and went out early the next morning, an army with horses and chariots has surrounded the city. Oh no, my Lord. Now listen. Uh. Oh no, my Lord. What shall we do? The servant asked. You know, I was sitting down there and I just felt stirred in my heart. Many times we see the problem. We see the enemy. We see the surrounding around us and we feel trouble. Just like the servant of Elisha, we feel trouble. We feel trouble by circumstances. We feel trouble by the issues around us. Don't be afraid, the prophet answered. Those who are with us are more than those who are with them. Amen? It is something that you and I can, can actually acknowledge. Those who are with us are more. But because Elijah prayed, open his eyes, the eyes of the servant, Lord, so that he may see. Then the Lord, <laughs> I like this part. Huh? The Lord, he prayed to the Lord for the eyes of the servant to be opened. The Lord opened the servant's eyes and he looked and saw the hills full of horses and chariots of fire. These are angels. The servant of the prophet, his eyes were opened by God and he saw the hills full of horses and chariots of fire, which is a symbol of angels all around El Elisha. And the next, next verse. And the enemy came down towards him. Elijah prayed to the Lord, strike this army with blindness. And he struck uh, them with blindness. I, I, I just want to ask, as I was sitting down there, I felt in my heart. Uh, some of us are looking with our natural eyes the situation and the circumstance around us. But you and I need to believe God that those who are with us are more than those who are outside. And that we can pray and ask the Lord, Lord, open our eyes that we may see these angels. We may see those who are on our, our side. And as we begin to ask God to open our eyes, we'll be able to see these angels. And these are ones who are going to work on our behalf. So let's pray. I, I want to ask you, uh, if you are having circumstance or situation, an issue that's around you, you can pray and ask the Lord, Lord, open my eyes to see so that I too can believe that there are angels around us uh, are angels to on our behalf to work on our behalf Father in Jesus name we pray and ask oh God uh, those of us who are struggling with our circumstance around us God enable us to see with the eyes that you open Lord open our eyes that we may see these angels coming and standing on our behalf working on our behalf to tear down the works of the enemy that seek to hinder us they seek to stop us. They seek to cause depression upon our lives. Open our eyes, O oh God. Lord, that we may that these angels may work on our behalf and to set, Lord, uh, Lord, the captives free, O oh God. Uh, so many of us, uh, Lord, captives of the what we see in the natural. Open our eyes to see the spiritual, O oh God. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Thank you.